Hello and welcome to the Facebook Live, to the Friday mini lesson series. Very important question, I know I'm asking this question every Friday, but today is especially important. Let me know if you can hear me because I'm testing out a new mic. Hopefully that will improve the sound quality. If not, we still have the um, audio recording going on. Hello Magda, <laughs> let me know if that can be heard what I'm saying. I'm sitting quite close to the mic, so hopefully it will work and hopefully it will pick up enough of the harp because there will be some playing today. Ah, thank you for the like. I hope that means that you can all hear me. Okay, so I'll wait to see any if there are any more comments, but uh, in the meantime we can start talking about today's topic because there's quite a lot again to say about metronomes. And I know I've got my electronic metronome here and I've got my phone and all the other devices. Let me just grab it to show you. I thought I'd start today with just discussing um, something which I'm sure every beginner is spending quite a lot of time googling. What, what micro, what, sorry, not microphone, <laughs> metronome, what micro, metronome to choose and what's best to go for because of course you've got all sorts of electronic ones, you've got apps, you also have the traditional metronomes, let me just grab it from the piano where the, where the computer is. So you've also got that traditional type of metronome which is not electronic, not electric, but just uh, mechanic and oh you can hear me that's great that's great let's see how how that sound will um will sound when the video is downloaded but for now we're fine so about me metronomes we've got the mechanic type the one which goes like that and we've got apps of course and we've got these electronic types which um, are powered by batteries. so about plus and cons of all these types of metronomes. So um, many people, I find that many beginners really like going for those because they just look uh, proper and serious and professional. And I agree they are very good. Um, maybe just an explanation that the numbers that you see there will be exactly the same on all the metronomes. It's a standardized um, unit of beats per second. So regardless which metronome you'll be using, that will be exactly the same. But with this type of metronomes, you need to make sure that they are properly wound, wound it up. So they mostly have this kind of thing on the side and then you need to turn them. That one is turned up to the maximum. Um, but if you notice them slowing down or in the worst case stopping, that's what you need to do to keep them going. Oh no, actually I was turning in the wrong direction. So yes, you can turn it up a little bit more. And it's a good loud sound and most of them have the option of setting up a small bell telling you once you've went past one to three or one to four when is your where is your main downbeat in the bar. Um, then electronic microphones, you can adjust the volume, something which you can't really do on those big professional um, well professional the mechanic metronomes. So that's quite good. Usually with all sorts of apps and electronic metronomes, you can also adjust your tempo, not only by um, the traditional um, values, which you can see on that metronome, they are all fairly standard. We go from 40 to 42, then 44, and then the spaces get larger. For example, between 142 to 138, we've got six beats. And then from 176, it's larger again. You can see that here, that here we're fairly close and here we're getting to be quite far. Um, so the plus of the electronic metronomes and apps is that you can adjust them bit by bit. For example, I can go from 100, um, 192 to 193 and, and so on. It again depends on the, on the metronome. Some of them can do that just uh, the same way as the mechanic me my metronomes. That will be the confusion of the day. Microphone and metronome. <laughs> Whenever I'm saying microphone and you think that it might have been metronome, please just assume that it was metronome. So it might be quite useful when you are able to go bit by bit um, if you can move up or down uh, by one unit on a metronome, especially if you're like if you like to progress slowly in the pieces, that can be quite helpful. 
Um, and then the electronic metronomes and some of the apps also have the function of giving you different sorts of beats. Let's put that guy on. And let's set up tempo for 60. I'll play it to you back in a second. So that's our 60. And then you've got that button which says beat and you can move that beat to have, for example, every second beat different, every third and fourth, so that's the same function as the bell on the other metronome. But then you can get quavers. You have, you have a little uh, picture of quavers there. You can choose to go to um, triplets, then triplets with the middle one missing, semi-quavers, semi-quavers with only the last one, and so on. And some of the apps will give you a greater variety of rhythms, some are uh, quite simple. I very rarely find this useful. I tend to rely only on the very, very basic beats. Sometimes if I'm practicing maybe dotted rhythms and I want to be extra super accurate, then maybe. But most of the times I can just put the metronome up to 240, that's 60 times 4, and then I'm getting my semi-quavers. Um, about the apps in the um, in phones on iPads and so on, um, one quite nice feature that they might have, depending on your preferences again, I don't use it too much, but you can change the sound of the click. So for example, if you get bored of the same click, you can choose different um, sound options. For example, on the metronome that I use, the app, which is called uh, Metro Timer. It looks like that when you when you open the app here it's particularly huge because it's on the iPad but you can choose different sound volumes different clicks let me put that on and you can have that's A then B C that's similar to the traditional mechanical metronome then some kind of percussion instrument and there are quite a few options I'll show you some of these later as well um, it seems to, it may seem that the best choice would be the most versatile one, like the electronic um, metronome or, or an app, but a very, very good plus of the traditional mechanic metronomes is that they are not connected to any electronics, so um, if you live in a place where you sometimes don't get electricity, then that's, uh, that's a plus, and another really, really big one, you can't go and play on your phone when you uh, when you're practicing i think that's really important because uh, when we have um, apps we sort of tend our uh, tend to keep our phone in our hands and we see all the notifications coming we can pick up the phones uh, pick up the incoming calls and so on so a very big advantage of traditional metronomes but also those which are not connected to any sort of smart device are the fact that you're getting much less distracted in your practice. So I hope that answered some questions from anyone who, who was wondering where to start, start their search for the metronome. And then a question um, which might be something you, you will be asking yourself, do I really need that metronome? And when I'm teaching, I tend not to give metronome or uh, recommend practicing with the metronome to all my students by default. I think that if it ain't broke, don't fix it, or I think that's, that's the version of the English proverb. And if I see that someone is keeping the steady, nice, slow tempo very well, and that they don't have problems switching between different sections, then I'm not telling them anything about metronome, I just make sure that they count out loud, that there are no extra notes anywhere in the bar. And with most of the beginners, um, if they practice slowly and if they are very disciplined about not uh, playing faster than they can, not getting carried away, the metronome um, doesn't really have to be necessary at that first stage of practice. But I think it's quite helpful for anyone who might be more advanced playing uh, pieces which have more notes to be played faster or God forbid, popular pieces which everyone knows um, how they how they go and how fast they are supposed to go. With uh, these kind of pieces, you really need metronome to be sort of a speed limit for you because if you know how the piece is going, 
um, one of the pieces I will be playing today will be one of those pieces that I suppose everyone everyone knows. And when you hear that melody and when you know how fast it should be going, it's really, really hard to keep steady tempo and not wander off somewhere. So um, I would recommend using having a metronome, maybe not using all the time, but having metronome if you are uh, more advanced and if you or if you're into playing some of these popular melodies just to keep your practice disciplined. Also, it might be helpful if you are a beginner, but you're really not keen on counting out loud. I have some students who really don't like um, counting out loud for some reason. I don't know if it's the sound of their voice or something, but then in that case, I would uh, recommend playing with a metronome to have something to, to keep you in, in check. It's not quite exactly the same. The best combination is to use metronome from time to time and count out loud. Uh, because these are two different skills that you're, you're practicing. But if you're, if you're really not a fan of counting out loud, then at least get a metronome. Um, when else you really know that you need to get one? When your teacher says that you should get yourself a metronome, I think that uh, that goes without question. I think if you study with someone and you trust them, you you should follow the advice that they are saying. If, you, if they think that metronome will be a um, good addition, to your practicing with counting out loud and other practice then then just get it they are not that expensive and the apps are mostly free and when you feel that you slow down or you rush or when you feel that some sections of the piece suddenly became much harder to play for some reason and you don't know why that's a sign that something might be off with the tempo we'll be speaking about this a bit more later if you're not studying with a teacher if you're self-taught try recording yourself and that will be also quite a good uh, way to tell if you're um, slowing down or rushing, whether into microphone, and then you can record yourself with the microphone again. We will be um, something we will discuss a bit more when I will be explaining how to practice when you get to play with the metronome. Um, now, for somebody who has never played with a metronome before and feels that it's all a bit strange, I would recommend not putting it on for playing, for your practice straight away, but instead try to do a few exercises without the harp, just you, your hands and the metronome. So let's put that mechanical one on just to check if it's properly up and let's put it on. 60. That, uh, that set of exercises is something that you will find in the practice sheet. In, on Facebook you've got the link in the description of this live and on Instagram that will be with all the other resources. The link is in my bio. So let's start with uh, 60. And if you remember that 60 is what you is the number of beats that you get per minute that will be exactly the second so you might as well practice that with that clock if you haven't gotten a metronome yet so let's put that on again and the first thing i would recommend you to do is just trying to clap together with the metronome so trying to get that beat exactly together with your clap okay and once you feel at ease with that, so I'm just checking on my notes and checking what, in which order the PDF exercises are, so I'm doing that in exactly the same order as you would be doing. When you get used to that, clapping exactly at the beat of the 60, start counting out loud. And let's count to four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And again, to check if you're doing that correctly, to check that uh, what you hear is what is really happening, you can uh, record yourself and play it back to yourself, see if you really have the clap, the click of the metronome and your words coming all together at the same time. Next step, let's put our metronome to 120, which is two times 60. So it means we will get 120 beats per minute, two beats per second. And let's try clapping with the metronome again. So. And again, when you get used to that, being together with the metronome, add the counting, but this time we'll be counting one and two and three and four and one and two and three and so on. And 
you will probably realize that ones and twos and threes and fours are exactly in the same place as they were before, but now we're adding the ends in between. So that means we're clapping twice as fast as we, as we did before, and we're slowly entering into something I will speak again about a, a bit more later, which is called subdivision, subdividing of the beats. Um, and when we go to that stage of clapping one and two and, and the metronome being on 120, we are clapping, let's imagine that we are clapping quavers. It's all relative in music, but let's imagine these are quavers. Then the next step would be clapping with the metronome, counting out loud, but as opposed to doing one and two and three and four, and we'll do one and two and three and four. So that means that we're switching to crotchets because we only have one, two, three, four, and the ends are all the quavers that we're, get, we're getting. And the next step will be keeping clapping, uh, sorry, metronome on 120. We keep saying one and two and three and four, and, but we only clap on one and on three. That means we will be getting minims. And try going, after you've done all that, try going back to playing, uh, sorry, clapping crotchets, then clapping quavers, and then back again. Then, um, that's not in the PDF sheet anymore, but then the next step you could do is try switching your metronome back to 60, and still trying to clap the one and two, and even though you won't have the metronome beat um, going on for you, that will help you to get the better sense of your own internal rhythm, sense of rhythm of your own internal metronome. So these were the exercises I would recommend you doing if you are new to playing with the metronome and if it feels very weird try recording and playing that back to you to see if you're really together if what you think is really happening or you can just practice those short bits that you will get in that video with, with me. You can access the video um, when it disappears from Instagram you can access it through my website the links are all there. Um, one thing that I just remembered about the advantages and disadvantages of the electronic metronomes and, and apps, usually the, the apps can give you a slightly wider range of tempi. That metronome, the maximum that it goes to is 208, the mecha mechanic metronome, and the bottom is 40. On most electro ele um, apps that I saw, you can go to 250 which can sometimes be helpful if you want to do really, really small subdivisions, for example, semi-quavers. So that would be, if 120 is quavers, then 240 will be semi-quavers. So that might be useful. Those uh, apps sometimes go as low as 30, which may be useful, although not so much, because I find that when you're below 40, it's really hard to anticipate it a bit because they are so far away that you can't really tell uh, when is the next one going to be, you lose a bit sense of time, which can be a problem sometimes and we will get to the problems with the metronome practice in a second. Um, then the next step would be playing your piece, playing uh, with the metronome and same with dynamics, I would recommend that you learn the notes in your piece that you have preferably the whole of your piece ready, especially if it's a short piece, because you will need to know if there are any tricky sections that should go, uh, should be practiced slower, slower than the others, because if that's the case, you can't just allow yourself to play easier sections faster and just hope for the difficult ones to sort of hang on there. You have to put all of them at the same speed, which is why I would recommend only putting the metronome on once you know the whole piece. Then, Finding the tempo, this is a really, really important one. So look at your piece, look at the time signature and look at what are the time values in there. If you have, for example, 4-4 four, four, and there are mostly crotchets and minims, no smaller time values than crotchets, you can probably quite safely go for setting your metronome in crotchets. If you've got quavers, I would suggest probably that you go for quavers because then you can easily follow each note in the piece. Um, play the most difficult section of the piece to find what will be the slowest tempo and then try to compare it to the metronome. You will have to shift probably the tempo up and down for quite a bit 
Again, it might be quite a good idea to record a bit of yourself playing because if you start switching uh, on the metronome, you might kind of lost the idea of how you were playing. So it's good to have a recording and then compare it to the metronome. And then quite important, don't try to go for the most similar tempo, but go a tad slower because metronome, especially when you're doing that for the first time, will add a bit of a stress element to your practice. You might feel a bit harassed, that's what students sometimes describe when they play with the metronome for the first time. And going a bit slower and having that extra time to think will mean that you're uh, less likely to be stressed and you've got a better chance of success with that. Um, second thing which might sound a bit silly, make sure you can hear the metronome well. So if it's an electronic one, adjust the volume so you can hear it or try playing a tiny bit softer that first time. Time. And important thing is that uh, our dynamics may impact our tempo. So um, that's why it's very useful to have the metronome on when you get to the stage of practicing the dynamics because we human beings have this uh, weird tendency of slowing down when we play softly and rushing when we play fast. So it uh, might be a good idea to start a bit softer first just to check on that tempo that it still feels comfortable to you. Um, and then if you find that you have some problems with that, we're getting to the problem section, if you find that you're getting out of sync with the metronome or you can't quite sync with it um, despite your best efforts, try first giving yourself a bit of time listening to the metronome. So put your fingers on the first notes of uh, whatever piece you're playing and listen just to the beat of the metronome for, for a while. And try to see if you can tap your foot in the rhythm. I normally don't recommend tapping uh, your feet to pedal harpists, but if you're just starting and you don't have that many pedals, that's fine. So try tapping your foot with the metronome. Listen a bit more. Try to imagine how that song would sound in your head if you, would if you were to be coordinated with the metronome. And then try to getting maybe the first note or maybe the first two notes with the metronome and just stop there and try getting those first notes uh, with the metronome. Again, recording yourself to check if you're doing the right thing uh, is a good idea. And keep listening because sometimes we think, oh, I'm together, so um, it's not that people think that they don't have to listen, but there's so much to be uh, focused on here that you don't have that attention. So that's why I say know the piece relatively well before you had the metronome, so you have some mental space to still keep listening to whatever is going on with that click, okay? Another problem that might happen is that the metronome will be too fast. If you see that you're making many mistakes, and um, sometimes it might be that the mistakes are just happening because you're new to the metronome, but most of the time that means that the tempo is too fast. So try slowing it down and again go back to that stage of playing the first two or three notes and trying to get them really in sync with the metronome, then gradually adding notes as you go. It might be also that you have problems getting in sync with the metronome because uh, the metronome is a bit too slow. And I think there's someone with a letter for me. So I'll be right back with you. Sorry about this. I'll explain. Sorry everyone, I should have said that uh, I was expecting a letter that I will need to sign for and normally the post office, the postman is coming a bit later, but today, uh, of course, if I were to do live, the postman would come exactly at the time of the live, but the parcel is here, so all good. So where was I speaking about metronome being too slow? So you, need, you see it's a bit of a tricky balance because if it's too fast, you're going to make too many mistakes and if it's too slow, it will be really hard to follow if the bits are too far away. Um, and then I wouldn't try to increase the tempo of the metronome in the sense that you would play faster, but use what I mentioned before, just subdividing the beats. So let's say that you worked out that 
you're playing in crotchets because the slowest time values are crotchets in your piece and that the crotchets should be at 40, which might be quite challenging at this slow tempo. So multiply that by two, that will take you to 80 and then the metronome will be giving you quavers. So if crotchets in your piece go at the pace of, of 40, let's, um, let's actually put that metronome on at 40. Let me show you. I think that's 42, but so that will be one. Yeah, you see that it's quite tricky to follow when they are really far away. So if you multiply that by two, that will take you to 80, 84 if we were on 42. So you get more beats, but this is going to be you playing on every second beat. So going one. those bits in between will make it more predictable and you can also use that extra bit to place your fingers if you're coming away a lot from the harp. Okay, I think we've discussed um, all the problems. Maybe now a quick, um, a few pieces of advice on how to progress on uh, with the metronome when you are in sync and when you've got your tempo and you've got your whole piece in at one speed. So all sections, including the tricky ones, are all going at the same speed without mistakes. I would say don't increase the tempo before you are able to play the whole piece without mistakes three times. It will be easier with shorter pieces. It will be more challenging, more likely time-consuming with longer pieces, but make a note of the time that you started that you started at, and then only increase the beat by one notch, uh, whichever metronome you're using. Um, if it's the mechanic metron, mechanical metronome, then of course go from 84 to 88 and not any further. If it's electronic metronome, I would suggest you even try going by shorter distances, maybe 86 just to make that difference as slight as possible and then again play it three times without mistakes and then you will be able to carry on. Um, and at the end of your practice I would recommend you go back to the original tempo just so you get used to playing with a lot of control even at the slow speed and that you've got this safe place where you can go back to if things start getting a bit, a bit funny. Alright, and I promised you two pieces First will be sort of pre-grade one standard. It's from the book uh, Bouquet for Young Harpies, this book, right at the second page, and it's called Bells Ringing. I'm going to play the piece for you first before saying a bit more about that piece. We've got all the levers okay. I hope you can still see me, even with the music stand here. Yeah. So that's a piece which has only crotches and minims, uh, like an example that I was giving you earlier. And with this one I would recommend definitely subdividing to quavers. I've got written down that for this piece 112 per quaver is quite a good one. And then if you can try counting out loud to make sure that you're always moving on to the next bar when it's time. So when you're going one and two and For most beginners it seems that those bar lines are quite a bit of a challenge, so try to go as smoothly as you can to the next bar. If you're stopping on the bar lines, that's an indication that probably you're trying to go too fast, that the tempo on your metronome is a bit too fast. 
Okay, and you can also try at this first stage of learning to play the piece, as I mentioned earlier, to coordinate it with your placing. So especially useful for this piece at the end of each bar, place for the next bar. So go one and two and three and four and one and two and three. Try to decide when are you going to place for the next bar. That will help you go over the bar lines smoothly. For example, in that first bar I decided that I'm going to replace my right hand on end, on free end and then replace my left hand on one of the next bar. But you can also do it that right hand on four. You can also replace that left hand really in any place in that second bar because it's not playing for a whole bar. The sooner the better, but it's up to you. Uh, one thing at a time, if it's too much to play one hand and replace the other, then just split that in time so you pay attention to only one thing at a time. And now another piece for a more advanced harpies. This piece, if I remember correctly, is in the syllabus for grade 4 ABRSM and it's a theme from Sonata number no. 11 by Mozart and that's what I mentioned earlier, those pieces which we all know and which we all know how fast they should be going, which makes them awfully hard to play them with the metronome. And when I was practicing that myself, I actually noticed that I'm quite likely to speed up, uh, especially when musical content is changing. There is quite a separate moment in the middle where suddenly you get a different theme and that's quite likely to go faster. So that piece I'll play it to you straight away with the metronome and for those of you who are interested I'm putting my metronome on a quaver 130, uh, sorry 176 and you will probably hear it. It sounds quite fast, but you will see that it doesn't quite translate to the piece being played too fast. Let me just run to myself away with the music because that one is a bit longer. Uh, Mozart theme of the Sonata number no. 11, and that's from the book Panorama della Arte Celtic. bit so you could hear it as well with me playing. Sorry about that, uh, but hopefully if you put the metronome on on 176 and it's quite in sync with the recording, you will be able to uh, hear what I'm doing there. And you could see that it is quite tricky here in that piece you've got uh, two sections where you, it might be appropriate to make a slight change from the metronome. In the bar uh, line 4, bar 2 and 3, you've got the symbol for a little breath which I couldn't really do if I were to follow the metronome, so it's kind of the thing that you will have to ignore when you're practicing with the metronome. And also I wanted to make a nice ritenuto at the end, and that's where I were, went wrong, which you could probably hear, um, because uh, it's, it's quite confusing. So it's best to not do these kind of things when you're practicing metronomes. Don't, um, don't read as I did. Don't do my mistakes. Um, about that piece you need to have your fingering really sorted before you play with the metronome because fingering and placing will affect your tempo and one little thing that I wanted to show to you what I've done here with my music so um, you hopefully will be able to see on my iPad that I've written in oops that's the metronome on the iPad go away oops 
Yeah, go away. Um, you can see that in that first line I've written, that's a bit of a glare, but hopefully you will see that I've written all the bits. These are the grey numbers, 1 plus, 2 plus, these are ends. Um, some teachers and students choose only to write the bits that they are playing on, but I find it a bit confusing not seeing all the bits that I have to skip. And instead of that, let me show you again, I'm writing them all and I'm coloring the one or circling the ones that I'm playing on. Normally with, uh, with my own pieces I circle them because I, I'm used to seeing that, but in case of students I was putting that in yellow so they can see, they have this visual indication where the metronome will be, that it will be 1 plus, two plus 3 and then they know that the yellow ones are the ones where they are playing on. Um, so that's quite a useful tip if you want something to keep you staying with the metronome a bit better. Um, let me know how did you find this. Did you, do you have any other questions about metronomes or did you have any other problems playing with the metronome? And the PDF is available to download at the link that I, I just shared. And let me know how do you like it and if you have any questions about metronomes or not about metronomes, any pieces that you would like me to play and show you how I would play them with the metronome, always happy to take questions and requests. And next week I'm seeing you exactly at the same time, Friday 11am. I hope you have a lovely weekend. It's apparently going to be sunny today, uh, here tomorrow, and I'm wishing you the same. Enjoy and bye!